Hello, everybody, uh, to our Tag Marshall expert session. Our Metropolis Country Club is keeping their rounds on pace and members happy in a high traffic season. High traffic season, as you've all had. Um, and here's a club that's done exceptionally well. So we're delighted to have uh, Craig Thomas with us, a PGA Head Golf Pro at Metropolis Country Club New York. Craig, how are you? I'm doing great, Bobo. How are you doing today? Yeah, very well, thank you. And uh, we also have another familiar face um, and friend uh, in Bill Carroll, who is our Tag Marshall partnership uh, rep in the Northeast. Bill, how are you? Where, where are you today? You've got so many homes, I've lost count. <laughs> I'm actually at my home in the Berkshires where it did snow last night. We got about an inch of snow. Thank, thanks for having me, including me. Happy to uh, be representing Tag Marshall for the last 18 months or so. And prior to that, I represented uh, Morel Studios for six years selling wards. So I'm pretty uh, familiar with most of uh, the clubs and the personalities in uh, the Mets section, New England section, Jersey section. Big territory, but uh, really proud to represent Tag Marshall on the product. It's a great company. Thanks, Bill. Um... Yeah, you also, uh, we're all for diversity, so we got another redhead in you on the team. We needed one more. <laughs> okay. um, all right, uh, Craig, um, Metropolis, uh, quite a household name in, in the uh, uh, New York Mets section. Why don't you do us a favor and do a quick intro on yourself and the club? Sure thing, Bobo. Um, like, uh mentioned my name is Craig Thomas and I'm the head golf professional here at Metropolis Country Club. I uh, just finished my 15th season here at Metropolis. Um, I've been in the Metropolitan section for close to 30 years. Um, Metropolis itself is um, going to be celebrating its centennial anniversary this coming year in 2022. So they've got a lot of big plans in place for that. Um, Metropolis is probably very well known for the condition of its golf course. Uh, we have a superior superintendent and he does a great job with his staff. They keep it in great shape and they have, uh, they've had a history, um, myself not included in that history, of extremely talented and well-known head golf professionals. Um, the likes of Paul Runyon, Harry Cooper, Jackie Burke Jr., um, and people from our area will be familiar with the name Bob Watson and Gene Boric. So um, big shoes to fill here, but we're doing our best. Thanks. Um, there's also a very modest person on your staff named Craig Thomas, because uh, I believe you're also a handy player and uh, off to playing some senior tour events down in Florida in the next few days. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm heading down there this afternoon, the warm weather, as Bill said, we got a little, Dusting of snow last night, so it's it's time to pack up and get out of here. Well, well timed. Oh. Yeah, um, I got to visit Metropolis uh, in 2019 when we could still travel and uh, meet uh, partners, and so uh, it's on much much easier. And it was fantastic uh, to um, yeah to meet some of your team and uh, also yeah just uh, get a bit of a tour. So delighted to have you here. And then there's also um, I know or I've seen just in the the crowd of attendees today. There's an old friend of yours in uh, Les Schupak. Uh, Les is the former president of the New York Met um, uh, golf, uh, PGA section, and uh, he's been working with us on the PR front for a number of years now. Les, um, give us a wave in the chat if you would. Um, Les's son is with the New York Times, I believe. So um, all the famous people that hang around us. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you uh, for the for the introduction. We've got a, a few points to talk through today. And thanks, everyone for making some time. If you have any questions at any point, uh, shoot them through in the chat or the Q&A and we'll, we'll obviously try and answer as best we can. Um, if you'll allow me a quick introduction to Tag Marshall, um, I'm a board of CBA, the the chief janitor, as I always joke. Uh, Tag Marshall is a, a golf course optimization system. So we specialize in anything on course operations and, and traffic management. Uh, we have tracked way over 20 million rounds of golf. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if, if there was a three coming up here soon. I guess it's been a busy year for us too. 
Um, data is one of our, our key value contributors um, and also we collect a lot of it. And we are now working with way over 350 uh, golf courses. Uh, we're very blessed in that we get to work with 30 of the top 100 in the US. So there's um, yeah, some of the household names here at Wingfoot, not far from uh, where uh, Craig's Club is at so Oakmont. They were in a webinar with us about uh, eight weeks ago. Um, Hazel Teen hosting a Ryder Cup in the not too distant future. And then obviously also uh, that's the private club section, then also uh, some of the household uh, resorts um, that, uh, and they all have you know, some, some key uh, uh, um, focuses. They want to provide the best possible play experience. They want to drive efficiencies and to want to optimize revenue, right? So those are all key business um, focuses in the game. Uh, we also uh, take partners to the European tour. So we get to add value in the tour space and learn there as well. And also partners to the USGA and RNA wherever we can, especially in the data field. Uh, we did track the uh, world amateur champs that the RNA held at Port Monarchan Island. So that, uh, uh, that was a great and fun event that we got to hop out and just adding value where we can. And uh, we're delighted to have fantastic partners, including uh, Metropolis Country Club. Um, you are now in season four using the system, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? Uh, that's correct. We just completed season four. Yes. Um, so there's lots of uh, data to look back at. And also uh, really great to see how the team and Craig have just kept getting better and better at what they do. Um, for us to jump in, um, you, know, you mentioned the conditioning and this photo uh, uh, speaks of that. Which of your holes um, is that there, Craig? Uh, that's uh, the seventh hole here at Metropolis. Beautiful. And uh, right now it's uh, dusted in snow. Uh, so you have looked after literally hundreds of thousands of golf rounds at the club and also uh, previously at others, I'm sure. So. Um, what would you say are the key factors to the player experience out of this list here that are all important course design, course conditioning, clubhouse amenities, pace and flow of play, playing partners in my group, accessibility, tea times, availability, and cost slash value. What, what we, would you say if you could only pick three, which ones would you do right and which ones float to the top? I mean, I think um, being at the at Metropolis here, course conditioning has to rank very much, very high on our list along with the pace and the flow of play. Um, and then I think everything else kind of falls behind those two. But if I had to pick a third, I might say accessibility and tea time availability as being our third. Um, yeah, th those would rank up there for us. And I'm sure that um, you're making great points. I'm sure that last one, tea time availability is one that started to float up in 2020 and 2021, right? How's, uh, how's your traffic been uh, compared to the normal years before that? Our, it's up, it's up considerably. I mean, for the first time since I've been here um, and it, it's only gotten busier since I've been here um, previous to my arrival, uh, we were over 20,000 recorded rounds this year. So for us, that's a lot. Uh, considering when I first got here 15 years ago, we were in the hovering between 12 and 13,000 rounds regularly. Yeah, that's a huge difference uh, and a much, much different landscape to manage. Um, Craig, you mentioned course conditioning, pace and flow of play, um, accessibility, tea time availability as, as a top three. And we've got a, a bit of research um, to share that uh, comes out of the USGA. Um, and they quiz some 20,000 golfers and, and uh, came out with a similar um, answer so you know uh, no surprises right 82% uh, of golfers say course conditioning is key so this normally comes out top and if you look at your budget and you mentioned you've got a phenomenal uh, superintendent you also know that uh, this gets a lot of attention at, at most clubs um, and then very close to that at 74% is pace and flow of play and in between actually is um, you know, good things like uh, accessibility, tea time availability is also highly ranked and who is in my group. Don't pay me with that strange single with the red hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bill. Um, I, know, I wouldn't want to be paired with you because, uh, well, no, it was you in my, in my, in my group because you take my money. So 
It's going to need to be here. So that's um, that's what the research says. Um, and there is one other set of research that uh, goes quite a bit deeper. Um, this uh, lady here on stage is uh, Professor Christina Skunova from the University of Wisconsin. And she is also the head of operations at Erin Hills, uh, our, our very first uh, partner that uh, that we've uh, that we worked with, and they've been phenomenal um, leaders in this field. And um, also because uh, Chris uh, Skunova is uh, um, yeah, so knowledgeable as an academic, and she's really brought that into the golf management space. Um, so this was at the um, golf innovation symposium that was held in Tokyo in 2019 again that year that we could all travel <laughs> and what they found was that what they presented there is out of a thousand touch points in a round of golf and a touch points includes things like teeing off uh, driving through the gate uh, putting your clubs in the trunk any anything that's got to do with with that booking around having a drink afterwards all of these are part of the golf experience and what they found is the worst thing that you can do for tour golf, the absolute low ranking, this frustrates me like nothing else in my golf life is corrective pace of play actions. That's the overall worst score. Now, corrective pace of play actions normally in, in this understanding is somebody coming over and say, hey guys, you're slow, get on with it, right? And this is what golfers, just their brains malfunction um, because nobody wants to be called slow, right? Um, at the same time, other people's speed, so if other people get in my way, that's equally as frustrating. Both are ranked so low. And then on the other side, positive martial and ranger etiquette gets the absolute top score, higher than conditioning. So this seems like a very easy puzzle to solve. Um, uh, Craig, would, would you agree? <laughs> yeah, I, I would agree. I'd highly agree. We actually, um, for, I think three or four years ago, um, pace of play was starting to become an issue here. It was probably right, might, it had to be five years ago then. It was probably right before we signed on with Tag Marshall. Pace of play was an issue. The club hired a marshal. They thought that was going to do it. But at, at a private club like ours, uh, people don't want to be told to speed up. They don't want to be told to pick up and move forward. I mean, they they all but ignored the marshal. So we we, we had to find the other ways to have those interactions with the members when they're out on the golf course and your software has provided you know us an avenue to to get out there before things become a problem and try to politely properly uh notify people that their place on the course is about five minutes further up so it, it's worked out really well for us in that respect yeah, we're going to talk about um, how your members have responded to the program. Obviously, it's second nature now to everyone, right? Because you've been doing it for such a long time. Uh, but uh, maybe just to be obvious here, what would you say the members don't respond to in terms of if they're approached in the what's a bad way to approach a member? And, and uh, reversely, what's the constructive way to approach a member if you need to have a conversation? What have you guys learned? Well, I think that the, the worst way to go about is that four letter word slow. I mean, it, as you said, nobody, nobody wants to think that they're slow. It's always the other person in the group or they're being held. They believe that they're being held up, um, so on and so forth. So that's never a positive way to, uh, to approach any group out on the golf course. What we like to do is we like to, whether it be my, uh, somebody from our first tee area, uh, my starter, myself, or one of my staff will, when we see that there's a problem on the course or, uh, you know, there's a problem starting to develop out on the course, we'll head out onto the course and just observe for a little bit. I'll go over and ask them how their day is going. Um, everything okay? I'll, I'll oftentimes, since we do, most of our rounds are predominantly walking with caddies. Oftentimes, I'll talk to the caddy or caddies first to find out if anything happened that, you know, kind of set these guys behind and so oftentimes it's uh somebody one or two people lost the ball in the fescue on number three and they took a little bit longer looking for it and they're aware they're that they're falling behind and they'll do their best to to pick it up so well, often you know many times we don't even have to talk to the members themselves we deal a little bit more with the caddies and they're aware of what they need to do 
Yeah, it seems like information is a key uh, contributor to success here. And, and I think it's uh, probably a good segue into, into our next uh, section. Uh, thanks for explaining that. Uh, we're going to dig a little bit deeper. So the question is, how is Metropolis using optimization tools and processes to ma manage field flow and pace of play effectively during an extremely busy season? Um, so let's look at uh, this technology that you've adopted. It's not new, obviously, but uh, to you, uh, certainly, um, which of these um, on point number one, which of these uh, front end units do you use at the club? Um, we use the walking groups with tags. I mean, we, we will give the tag to the caddy or one of the caddies. If we do have the occasional groups that uh, all four players in are, are in a cart, we'll just take one of the tags and stick it in the, the glove box of the cart and off they go. Um, yeah, so this is uh, this is what uh, Craig's referring to. You can see my, my cursor here. I don't know if you can. Um, so yeah, classic tag um, tracking walkers. It's one in a group. Uh, we do have a unit that goes into carts as well, because obviously there's many, many uh, golf courses doing lots of cart golf. This one on, on our world comes with a geofence buzzer that alerts people if they're going into a wrong area. And then we do have a more classic GPS version as well. It's got yardage and um, a view of the course. And then obviously also it sends information back to the players. But all, all that these units do is they send information on movement on the players where they are to the cloud server that's um, uh, where our system then processes that and then um, calculates what's the status at any given time any second of every day and then uh, feeds that back to the team um, at yeah at, at the metropolis clubhouse and then somebody might have it have a tablet that they've got with them that they go out on the course with so they've got this information at hand um, and it's really a, a tool that uh, allows for live management, but also really collects background data that helps um, benchmark and you know, tweak so that you can get better and better and better. And I, and I think with Metropolis, we've got a fantastic story to tell around this. Um, so let us jump ahead uh, here, Craig. The Metropolis is bottom left. That's what the club looks like in the Tag Marshall world. That is your map. This is a uh, a made up course. Unfortunately, we obviously you snowed under now, there's no more traffic. So, uh, but so we just want to look at this club. It's a flip over Aaron Hills. Uh, but you know exactly what's going on on this course, even though it doesn't exist and you've never been there, you know, just because you're so used to uh, the system. So, what if somebody was to look over your shoulder and ask, them, What is this? Uh, how would you explain it to them? Well, the, the first thing we want to look at is we, the green numbers are all groups that are on the course and they're on or ahead of time. The yellow ones we see 18 and 19, they are behind time, but they're being delayed by somebody in front of them. And the big, large magenta number 17, it tells us that that group is actually delaying the groups behind them. So we like to start, when we start looking at um, issues out on the golf course, we want to try and catch them as early as possible. So although we do see up on the 14th hole, a magenta number six, who's holding up the group behind them as well, we want to try to address um, the group number 17 first. So we would head out there if somebody hasn't done it already and find out exactly what happened. Um, by clicking on the number 17, it'll pull up the history of that group. And we can see that the first two holes, they were doing fine, but something happened on the third hole and the fourth hole was a little worse and the fifth hole is now even worse. So that, you know, again, I would talk to the caddies and say, listen, you guys got off to a good start. What happened on three and why is it getting only worse? Because they, they have now been over the allotted time per hole for three holes in a row. Um, and then if, if need be, I'll just, politely say to the guys, you know, hope you're having a good day. Do what you can, see if you can kind of close the gap and catch up to the group in front of you. Again, not mentioning the slow word. The, the S word is not allowed. Um, I know some of our other partners, they they say, well, you're out of position, meaning you're supposed to be half right. rolling 
and that seems to compute well with the golfers. Right. Um, there's also a red icon here. This one, um, you know, it well it says, well, they're out yep. of position, but they're not impacting anyone just yet. So, so what our system does, it, it calculates all this movement data versus a grid that sits in the background. So every hole's got multiple grid zones, where you're supposed to be versus where, where are you in reality. And then also the, uh, the groups relative to one another in terms of the time gap in between. And then we prioritize. Um, it's quite a complicated algorithm that, or complex rather, that um, this group number five is the big issue because their trend is negative, they're getting worse, and also they're so early in the round and they already have a tail of two. So that's exactly who you want to talk to. And, and I would uh, guess, uh, Craig, that if your team goes out and has a chat, you'd probably then also go to the groups behind them who in a, in a past life would have called the clubhouse and saying, we're being held up and uh, where are you? you know? So right. is that part of the strategy as well to, to uh, put their minds at ease a little bit? Yes, I mean, it, it depends where they are on our course. If I have to drive or if we have to drive past them on our way out to group 17, we'll mention to them preemptively, listen, I, I, mean, I know you guys are being held up a little bit. We're gonna, we're gonna kind of move the group ahead of you along. Just do your best to keep up with them. And if we, you know, if we get to group 17 first, because the other groups are further away from the golf shop when we head out there, we'll talk to group 17 and then we'll go talk to 18 and, and also 19 and say, listen, I know you guys are held up a little bit. Things are gonna get better. We've talked to them, just do your best to keep up with them. And then we just, you know, if it's really bad, we'll just kind of hang out there and watch them for a little bit. We may even be act as a little bit as a four caddy for group 17 for a hole or two, just to try to get them back into position, because that early in the round, that that could ruin the day for a lot of people behind them. Sure, yeah, it's certainly worth the effort. And if you can get to get them back in position, you've saved the day for everyone behind them, and you're not getting any phone calls, and it's success, right? You mentioned earlier, if the conditioning is right, the flow is right, that's happiness, and the rest sort of falls into place. Um, we also obviously can track. Uh, superintendent vehicles so very often the superintendents would plug into the system and they would see if there's a viable gap in the field can their team get more done uh, which is helpful and then if there's drinks cart about well that's also helpful to know um, especially if they're mobile uh, but uh, from on, on you at your club um, at metropolis you also have a t-sheet integrated and it pulls the names through to the system um, are you finding that sorry are you finding that useful when it comes to knowing who's who before you even go out there? Yes, I mean, we find that very useful. We use four T's for our tee time system and it talks very well with Tag Marshall. So the groups are already in there. When, when we assign the tag to the group, it pulls the names over. So when, when, we, when you're in the shop and you first see that red number start to show up or the magenta number, you click on the name and oftentimes it's an aha moment. Okay, you knew this was gonna be a problem. I didn't think it would be a problem this early in the day, but let's go talk to Mr. Fill in the name. I'm not even gonna say a word. Mr. Bill Carroll. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can use my name, I'm, I'm that guy. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, okay. Uh, no, that's uh, that's great. And we do have, I think it's about 15 integrations now. So in the private club space, the Jonas, the club essentials, the four T's, uh, it's really smooth. Um, and it adds a lot of value. So over time, and you have a lot of history to look back at each and every single member, then also we're building a profile on, right? So that you can see at any time, where does this person sit in terms of how often are they delaying others? How often are they uh, um, on pace, what's the experience like generally, where do they fall out of position, all of those things are available. Um, and we we're talking about information that's available. Here's an example of uh, what we call a track map, uh, where every single round that gets played has got one of these attached at the end of the round, uh, where you can see um, how did this group move along their day, um, who was in it, these are fake names, uh, Craig, we, we don't want to um, point out any one of your precious members here, but this is a real round that happened on the 24th of July, and this round came in at 424, 
which is a, a bit over uh, your goal time. What's uh, what's the goal time you're playing towards or were in July? Do you recall? Well, we have a we have a staggered goal time here at Metropolis, which I think has helped us as well. Anybody teeing off eight thirty or earlier, their goal time is three hours and fifty minutes. Um, the next hour and a half of tee times uh, taking us to nine o'clock is four o five, and then after that we go to four fifteen. So these people, we would have wanted them to play in four fifteen, having teed off at one fifty seven. So mm -hmm. it's um, almost ten minutes over their allotted time. So, so here we we are showing that there was one interaction. It says friendly encouragement to pick up pace and get in position. So Gregory, assuming is one of your assistants. Yeah. Uh, so this is all logged, right? And then at the end of the day, if um, you can then you have this available. Um, do you ever use this? Uh, do you ever need to have um, sort of a deeper conversation maybe with a member if they, uh, you know, if they maybe fall behind a, a little bit too often? We've had certain conversations. I have, I don't put anybody else in that position, but I've had certain conversations with some members. Um, really what it comes down to um, our committee, our golf committee has set up a, a process that, you know, if you don't play within a five to 10 minutes of your expected time, you're going to receive an email from our golf chairman. Um, if this happens twice within a two week period, you are going to then be assigned to tee time more commensurate with your ability to get around the golf course. So if you're always signing up for the eight o'clock time, yet you can't finish in anything less than four hours and five minutes, mm -hmm. then you're going to be pushed back to, you know, somewhere around nine o'clock or later, uh, depending on all the other people. So at that point in time, when that person has continually put in for an early tee time, and they keep receiving a nine or later tee time because our tee times are assigned by a quote lottery on the weekends. Um, that's when the conversation sometimes needs to be had. And I, I've had that conversation on more than one occasion with a few members and very politely said, well, well, let me show you something. Let me show you. And I've called their, their individual name up and it tracked their rounds and we can say it, we can set the date for all of last year all last month, we'll set the parameters however you want. Listen, here's your last 20 rounds played. Only, you know, 20% of the time are you you meeting our goals, you know? Well, then they'll say, well, somebody's ahead of me is holding me up. Well, no, nobody was holding you up. You were actually holding other people up. And, and the, the information is right there. The data is there. They can't argue with it. Yeah, that's always a big, um, thing for a lot of members, they will blame it on their playing partners or they were held up at the turn or the group in front of them was slow, so they're slow. But the way your system's set up, I mean, if, if he's a yellow all the time, yeah, he's being held up. But as soon as he is that magenta color, you know, he's the culprit. Yeah, I think uh, you, you're making some good points here in that uh, fact and data really even out the conversation and there's no opinion, there's no perception. And sometimes you may have somebody come into the clubhouse and say, oh, it felt like we're playing five hours today, right? And um, and then you can also check that. And and sometimes uh, 4.15 may have felt like five hours to that person, but it was 4.15, you know, and everybody in front of them played um, in line with uh, expectations. So, uh, data is, uh, uh, I would think, makes these conversations um, much more manageable. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I mean, we'll, oftentimes at the end of the days, we'll receive an email. You know, it'll go to myself or it goes to the the gentleman here that run our first tee, um, complaining. You know, a member got home and just, you know, oftentimes maybe they didn't play that well. They had a bad day, and now they're just letting the let off some steam and it comes through that place to play was awful. It took, it's the longest round I've ever played. So you call it up and it's, it's not that bad. It's, you know, it's four hours and 10 minutes. You're teeing off at 1130 on a Sunday. You know, that that's not, you know, it, it used to be a lot worse. So. Um, 
Great to hear. And uh, yeah, we're also talking to pros who actually use this information to try and help their members improve, right? If they get stuck at certain holes too often, well, how can I help you uh, be better? And uh, that's another lesson that uh, be, can be put to good use, right? Um, let's jump ahead. Uh, Craig, thanks for uh, the insight here. What's the impact on operational efficiency? Um, because uh, we've all you know, been um, in that boat now the last two years that uh, there's so much traffic and uh, you don't necessarily have bigger staffing contingents you need to get more done with less resources. Um, also resourcing into the future is getting um, harder, not easier. Uh, so let's uh, yeah, maybe talk uh, a little bit to um, how is it helping you be more efficient? You mentioned you used to have a marshal, assuming that's not the case any longer. And uh, just in, in terms of how is it impacting your your day to day um, to get things done better? Well, we, we take, um, you're correct. We don't have a marshal anymore. Um, we felt as though just sending somebody out there for the sake of members seeing him was a, you know, it was a waste of time and money. I mean, it, it just did not produce any results. Um, we do take a lot of the information from people's rounds when we are, you know, assigning tea times for the following week. We know who was, who has historically our quicker players, our slower players, and we set the tea sheet up accordingly. And that helps us a lot. Um, because, you know, when those first two or three groups of the day are playing in 3.30 and 3.20 to 3.40, it just it kind of gets everybody moving in a good in a good pace. If that first group is coming in at 3.55 or 3.58, you know, you know by 10.30 you're going to be in trouble. Yes. Yeah, I think um, over and above the, the live management that you do so accurately now and preemptively, like you said, I think um understanding how your day flows and having that certainty has allowed you to deploy some some key strategies which we, we're going to look at some data now um but let me just quickly uh, yeah point out one of the this is the tag marshall analytics hub and it shows how um metropolis has played in july which is a hugely busy month right um 935 groups. Uh, Craig, would you say that uh, you would time this by three or three and a half um, in terms of the actual player volume? Is what, or, or in July, it, is it close to a four? What would you say in terms of actual players? Um, I would say three is probably safe because sure. while Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we are mostly foursomes, um, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we're probably foursomes are not the norm. You know, a lot of twosomes and threesomes are heading out there. Got you. Um, yeah, so just to a quick a quick look here. So this is the entire month of July, every single day here, uh, tracked as how did it run versus the goal time. So Craig mentioned they have uh, dynamic goal time or variable goal times, but it still averages out to 409 if you look at um, how it's spread out across the day. We should look at the detail just now, but you're coming in at 3.53. So you're well under that. And that in a hugely busy month. So there's obviously, you, you're getting a lot of things right. Um, then maybe one uh, point to make is that it's not really that helpful in the bigger scheme of things to look at the average run times, because like you said, now you do have a lot of um, smaller groups, uh, two sims, three sims that are generally quicker. Um, so we, we don't want to those quicker rounds to hide the slow rounds, right? So one of the things that Tag Marsh looks at, what's the breakdown on a per group level of, of uh, groups that are really quick, 30 minutes or more quicker than the goal time. And then goal time here is green and then slow. Um, and it shows here that you have 95%, literally 95% on pace of within 10 minutes, which is what anyone would sign off on that. That's a great flow. And only a very small portion is just slightly over. And that might be on your busiest days. That might even have been a tournament. But um, yeah, well, well done to you and the team for executing so well for your members and also really having that certainty. Um, and down here is a hole by hole stats where every hole is um, split into the T box fairway and green. And then we can see how does it run versus assumptions. 
um, and are there holes that are going over and, and you are pretty close here on all of them. And sometimes it goes completely against uh, the initial assumptions of a, of a club management team. But having that data and then many clubs also use this then to make changes that might be a different setup that might be making a whole easier, making a whole tougher, uh, just to balance things out. Um, is, is that something that you've taken into consideration? And, and what of this data do you look at? So let me jump back on a day to day or month to month or maybe end of season reporting basis. And this is helpful to the club. We look at the hole by hole um, more at the end of the season. Um, at least we have looked at it in the past at the end of the season to see if we needed to adjust our goals on any particular holes. Uh, when we first started with you guys, we we probably tweaked it three or four times since then. You can see how the ninth hole kind of slows down, which if, if that particular hole, it's a very short par three, not a big deal, but it's it's right. It ends right here at the golf shop, and the halfway house is here, and the restrooms are in the golf shop. So that that all just kind of adds to the amount of time before they kind of get back out there on the course. And then the tenth, eleventh, and twelfth holes are all fairly difficult holes. Hmm. So. It, it, that that four hole spread right there with all that red showing is not we don't like to see that but we just kind of live with it right now yeah but um in fairness to you that the data is very unforgiving if it's 10 seconds over it'll it'll switch to red right so this is really actually marginally over Mm -hmm. um, and you can see that you have already made adjustments uh, and also it's good to keep making adjustments because also you keep getting better right so you want to hold yourself to the best possible standards um, that you can and, and I think uh, this is probably a good point to uh, to look at this um, you know, the the variable goal times that you mentioned so uh, just uh, very briefly what this graph depicts is the play volume within um, at an hour. So this is uh, the key days at Metropolis, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, like at many private clubs. So here's the play volume and that spikes heavily um, into nine o'clock uh, to 10 uh, tee off times. So these are the groups. And then the purple is your average round time across the day. And you can already see there's a, a firm trend here. Later in the day, not so much traffic, things speed up. Early in the day, um, even though there's a, quite a bit of traffic, you have um, been playing under three, 340. So this is where Craig and the team um, have uh, you know, discussed this with our uh, customer success team who helped them analyze the data. And then they've deployed these um, yeah, staggered goal times. So it's not just one time that you measure yourself against, but you're actually tightening the screws a little bit. And uh, you now get your early rounds. And this is a lot. There's a lot of play happens in... Um, at quite a bit quicker than your original goal time used to be at around 4.15. So how has that helped you, um, you know, get control? Um, and do you also, is that something that you, you communicate with members who want to play at those times? Mm, good question. We, we do communicate with the people that request those early times that the goal is under four hours is, is how we phrase it. You know, you, you need to be able to get out there and move around the golf course. And, and some of the members don't even want that pressure of having to, to move that quickly. So they would prefer to play it between nine o'clock and 10 o'clock. Um, but we, we, like you said, we continually look at this as I look at this now, and we talked a little bit earlier, I think that afternoon goal time will drop that down. Um, we may even drop you know, instead of going from 405, maybe we maybe we go from 355 to 403, and then from 1030 on, we just leave it at 410, mm -hmm. and and we don't have we don't go to 420 because it, it doesn't look like it's nobody ever got near 415, let alone 420. So I'll have a conversation with our committee and show them this slide and. I think they'd be very happy to to move it lower. Yeah, um, that's uh, that's exactly what it's there for, and that to really guide your 
your decisions and your strategies and you can never know enough about your business right so i'm glad to hear that um i think what's uh, what's probably worth mentioning is that this is really the the sum total of a lot of little things that the team at metropolis does right every single day so it's not about massive changes it's about getting the small things right uh, continuously and then you keep getting better and better and better and and to to show that here's 2018 which was a regular old year at metropolis 119 groups tracked you mentioned times three so that's a single day um uh, and now 2021 you have 34 percent more traffic so at any other club with 34 percent more traffic you would expect the round times to go up and things to uh, start to choke up up out there but um what you have been able to deliver for your members is the contrary. You're actually faster than you ever were, 12 minutes faster, even though you've got 30% more traffic. Um, if, if, if we had this magic wand and uh, on my way to work, um, there's 34% more traffic and I get through 12 minutes quicker, I was like, please sign me up. How much, how much can I pay to, to, to be in the fast lane? So I think um, that goes to show that over time, um, yeah, you really drill down into these little details and you're just so good at it now. Um, and uh, well done to you. And uh, so what we do across the you know, close to foreign clubs that we work with, we benchmark this and we look at who's doing really well versus the traffic versus how long the course should be playing. And then we actually yeah, award um, a, a certification of, of excellence almost. And uh, this year you guys really shot the lights out with this uh, because you really put renewed focus on it because you knew that you were going to be so busy. So this is a fantastic um, achievement for you. Um, would you say that it's been incredibly hard work to get this done or has it been quite smooth for you and the team? No, it hasn't been incredibly hard work. It is just, just having to pay attention to, you know, keep your eye on that screen throughout the day. Um, we have a gazebo over by our first tee area. So they have two monitors in there. One is always has four tees running. One always has the tag marshal screen running. So we are very aware of what's going on out on the golf course. And then the same thing here in the golf shop, we have two screens at the front counter. One is always got our point of sale up and running on it. In the background, the tag marshal is up on that. And then the, the side screen up there at the front counter always has the tag marshal thing on it so you know we'll we'll just always you know just refresh it look at it um the girls in the shop uh know that if they see they don't even know golf none of them play golf but they know th that red and magenta circles are not good mm -hmm. so if i'm not around and as long as i'm not out there on a lesson and they know I'm available, they'll reach me on the radio and they'll let me know that Mr. So-and-so's group on the third hole is already red. Hmm. So then I'll, you know, take the appropriate actions. Nice, it makes it sound so easy. <laughs> um, maybe one, one point to add here quickly. So this staggered goal time strategy that, uh, that, uh, that we help clubs develop, um, that, leads itself to the creation of additional capacity at, at some point right because uh, what we're finding is uh, if you maybe a little bit more aggressive here uh, you could play this through two three forty because that's effectively what your players are coming through at well now you are 30 minutes quicker than later in the day in 30 and that means that people are moving quicker across uh, metropolis so what a lot of clubs then start doing, they tighten their intervals a little bit in that segment. And guess what happens? You're freeing up time. You've got one more tea time available, two more tea times available. Like I mentioned earlier, we were on a call with Oakmont recently and they did that so successfully this year. They're in the same, they're four years in or three years in. And they said, we have so much demand on play. We now realize we can, we can create a fantastic experience for everyone and we can create more capacity for players. Um, so they had 2,000 additional rounds that they could make available just by tweaking this a little bit. Um, and they want to look at more. They started on certain days of the week just to test it out. And now they want to roll it out across the entire week uh, next season. So this is where you're really getting into the, the bigger opportunity that, uh, of what you can uncover uh, with data. And obviously at a daily fee course, well, now you're talking a straight profit line 
um, opportunity here, right? So for you, it's about can we create the best possible experience and can we get more members out when it matters? And the LFE course, it's about uh, it's about revenue. Um, but speaking about members, um, and uh, yeah, I remember it well. This is a beautiful uh, clubhouse uh, portion. Have half your members and guests responded? Um, maybe thinking back initially when you got going, but also the season, not an easy one, you know, so much traffic. What's the buy in like from the members and guests? Um, and uh, how's that worked out for you guys? It, it, um, seamlessly, it's worked out very well. Uh, we, we took in a bunch of new members in the past year to year and a half. Um, and some of our, you know, longstanding Metropolis members had some very uh, big concerns that the course was getting too crowded and um, rounds were going to take too long and things of that nature. So the rounds aren't taking the time that they thought they would. So that's been a great thing. Um, the T sheet is definitely more crowded. So there's no denying that there are, we are getting a lot more play, but people don't mind teeing off at a later time if they know that they're still going to get around in, in that four hour time frame. Whereas, you know, it used to be once you teed off past 11 o'clock, you, you were in for four and a half to or longer. And I, and I don't know why, you know, perhaps we just never paid attention to it. You know, they didn't need to because it wasn't that busy when you're playing 12 to 13,000 rounds a year. I mean, it's, it's not that busy out there. Sure. Um, Craig, one of your uh, colleagues over at Hampton Hills Country Club, he mentioned recently in a conversation, he feels 2021 is the last season of forgiveness. So what he meant by that was 2020, everyone was just so glad that they could go out and play golf after being locked up. Um, and in 2020, sorry, 2020 and 2021, um, now uh, there is still a lot of traffic um, and there's more competition, I suppose, for those tea times. But still, we're happy that we have this uh, this outlet, like we can play a bit more golf than we used to. But he felt that 2022, people's expectations um, and what they're asking of the clubs in terms of service levels is going to go back to what they're used to from when it wasn't quite as busy. And because they might think, well, I've got other things to do again. And also, um, you now have had enough time to prepare for more traffic and so on. What, what is your sense uh, on that? And obviously, you you're well in the running for having done everything right for your members, but uh, do you think you might be onto something? Um, our management team felt that um, 2020 was the last year of forgiveness, to be quite honest. So we, <laughs> we came into this year knowing that we were going to be busy, having taken in a lot of new members. Um, and 2020 was a, a, a crazy year. And then 2021 was about the same. So yeah, I, I think, you know, We've all had to do more, offer more services um, with less staff and less things that are disposable at our disposal. So I, I think people people just expect it now. I mean, it's not they don't want to hear you're understaffed. They don't want to hear you know there's not money in the budget for this or not money in the budget for that. You gave them everything they wanted through this terrible year and a half, and in their mind, this is over. Yeah. You know, we're we are the club has made a point that we are budgeting and forecasting for 2022 to be, you know, that this whole mess is is behind us, mm -hmm. um, and we just have to be ready for everything that they're going to throw at us. I think he's, you know, he hit the nail right on the head there. This nobody's expectation level is going down. Sure. Um, but look, uh, the bright side is obviously opportunity, right? What would we have given for a, a growth burst like that? And also, especially more younger members um, and more new players joining the game, it's, uh, it's a blessing. And we're probably very fortunate to be one of the few industries that's actually been able to grow. So now we have to just do the right thing for for, uh, for everyone and especially also accommodating newer players um, and finding that uh, that middle ground. And I think, uh, yeah, you guys have done a phenomenal job this season and uh, you just get, keep getting better. So, but now it's time for a break. Um, 
uh, you are heading south to play a few tournaments, I believe. Yes, yep. I just finished packing my clubs this morning and uh, catching a flight this afternoon. So nice it's time to go relax a little bit. Um, we had one Q&A question about uh, what is needed to uh, do an integration into a T-sheet. Yeah, so it normally works via API. Uh, let us know and then we can give you some information and uh, the bottlenecks normally not on our side, but it, it might be on your existing T-sheet. What API systems do they have that we can plug into? I'm very happy to talk. Um, thanks for the question. Um, if there are any other questions for Craig, uh, please shout. Uh, Bill, um, what have you learned? Uh, you're the expert on the New York golf. You play too much golf up there, just be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Not playing any golf right now, unfortunately. But uh, no, I thought the uh, session was great. One thing that I did want to highlight was that, you know, Craig mentioned uh, being on top of the screens. One of the, the beauties of the systems is the custom alerts. I don't know if we really touched on that, but, you know, you can set the system up in several different ways to get high alerts, low alerts, robocalls, text messages, emails. You don't even need to be at the course to uh, get a notification if someone's behind play or uh, breaking a geofence, that kind of thing. So that's a very valuable uh, benefit that goes with the system. Yeah, good point. Efficiency is, yeah, we can always, we can always look for a little bit more, a little bit better, right? And the sum total of it then really makes a big difference. Um, okay, yeah, I'm not seeing any more questions pop up. Um, we have tried to caddy you through this in a, in a good time. I think we've done really well. Craig, thank you so much for your time and the insight. Um, and well done again to you and the team for this phenomenal season. It results in 34% up in traffic and you bring down your round times and making everyone happy. Um, I hope that you can use this data in your uh, and, 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 uh, and feed it back to your, um, uh, to your club leadership uh, because it really goes to show that the effort uh, has paid off for, for all the members and all the many rounds that we've played. But now you must enjoy a fantastic break. And then, uh, yeah, we hope to, are you heading down to the show? Seeing that you're yeah. flying. Yeah. And... yeah, we're looking, we're excited to go back to the show. So we will be there. Nice, that'd be great. Yeah, shake some hands, check what's new. It's not gonna be quite as big, uh, but we all have maybe a little bit more time to engage and to act. So yeah, we're looking forward to seeing you down there. Um, have a great break and uh, thanks again for your time. Bill, you also <laughs> gotta head south now if you wanna play golf. Eh? <laughs> Thanks, Craig, for the time. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks to all the guests for listening in. Okay. Bye.